So Kitch is getting ready over there. Passengers will be here soon. But I got something else in mind. Let's go take a tour of the B-17. The B-17 Flying Fortress. About 12,000 of these suckers were uh, produced uh, during World War II. Uh, about a third of them were lost in combat. So, leaving about 8,000. There were 14 flyable B-17s uh, uh, today. Uh, this is one of them, actually. Uh, this was up earlier today. I'm very sorry we missed it. But uh, uh, we're in Albany right now, and this will be up uh, on the 24th. Uh, you can buy a ride net for about 400 bucks and get uh, crammed in. Hi uh, there. Um, this particular B-17 um, was produced near the end of the war. Uh, never saw any combat. It is painted in the colors and nose art of the original Liberty Bell B-17 that flew about uh, 65 missions or so. Uh, uh, this, uh, this one again uh, didn't, but uh, whatever. It's a, a faithful recreation and it is uh, a flying airplane. One awesome thing about these uh, radial engines is they leak oil like crazy. I don't know if you can see it in the shadows, but since this thing's been shut down, you see the oil down there? Uh, it's even actually got a soaker pad for oil over, uh, uh, over here. Um, this one here, uh, the history was it was sold uh, as scrap uh, to a mining company in 1947 and then sold again to Pratt & Whitney for 2700 bucks. Pratt & Whitney operated this for 20 years. It was a flying test bed uh, for their uh, T-34 and T-64 turboprop engines, thus making it a five-engine B-17. It's a JetBlue aircraft that diverted uh, from Newark uh, due to bad weather, which is over there. It's uh, departing soon. Anyway, um, when they strapped the, uh, the turboprop engines on this, They'd strap it on the front of the aircraft and they would feather all these four engines while testing out the turboprop. So this is actually a single engine test bed uh, airplane uh, for, uh, for the turboprops. Gives you an idea of just how powerful the, uh, the T-34 and the, uh, the T-64 turboprop engines were that were being used, that it could drag this whole thing along single engine. Um, 1968, then this was donated to the Connecticut Aeronautical Historic Society um, and they operated it for about 10 years. Uh, and then a tornado came along uh, when this was on the ground and it uh, threw another engine right into the B-17's midsection right here and unfortunately broke her back. That sucked. Uh, it was uh, then stored for another 20 years uh, until uh, 87 and uh, then it was acquired by an aviation enthusiast uh, in Florida who decided he was going to restore it. Uh, that lasted another five years uh, and uh, 1992 uh, they decided to actually restore it in earnest. Um, then uh, they did that for eight years and then it got uh, sold again to the Liberty Foundation. Um, Mr. Don Brooks uh, owned it and uh, his dad flew B-17s uh, in World War II. So he decided to uh, paint this as the Liberty Bell as a tribute to his father who was a tail gunner and flew numerous combat missions in the original Liberty Bell. So there you go. That's why this is the uh, Liberty Bell. The uh, owner's dad uh, actually flew the original. Beautiful airplane. Um, it was restored, to, it took 14 years to restore this. It took to the skies uh, after 38 years on December 2004 and continues to fly. So this is where the owner's dad was stationed, right in there. Dangerous as all hell. It's actually got the guns in. If you look close, you can see they actually have the gun parts there as well. Man, that must have been cold. The tail parts here, um, or the, the tail, or the elevator, is fabric. Uh, it's painted the same as the metal, but uh, I can tell up close. I'm not sure you can. Maybe you'll be able to, but that's correct uh, fabric right under there. I don't know if you'll, uh, here I'll change the focus to macro. You can see fabric. A little bit of jet blue launching, old and new. But you see those jets all the time. We really don't see this very often. I guess this is where you get in. I'm not gonna get in, there's no one around, so uh, I'm just taking it on faith I'm not gonna get tasered. Uh, for, for doing this. Another rear-facing gun, belly gunner, amazing. Uh, this looks like where you would depart uh, during an emergency, where you'd hop out onto the wing and uh, hop out. Looks like a split flap system there, uh, whereas uh, so the, the top part of the wing here wouldn't fold down, but it looks like the bottom part of the wing uh, does. Again, a split flap, which goes pretty far along the wing then to the ailerons, which are also fabric.
Beautiful. And I love that there's oil everywhere. It's a good, honest, hard-working airplane here. You can see the cowl flaps in the back of these radial engines. Cowl flaps are open there. That helps keep it cool. And let's check this out. You can see the turbochargers. Each engine has one. See the blades of the turbocharger? Coked in dead oil. That is so cool. Uh, those would spin and uh, help uh, compress... Uh, Oh, um, let's see, how do the turbochargers work? They would compress the uh, gas, maybe it's a supercharger. Uh, either way, it would compress uh, either intake or exhaust gas and, uh, and use it to uh, help, uh, uh, help improve engine horsepower. Lots of dripping oil up there, so cool. A couple more air intakes. Get us. The wheels here come up to my chest. Here. So these are not small at all. Three bladed props. It's the Liberty Bell logo lady. So this would be, a, I guess you'd have three gunners uh, up here. Uh, one on each side and then one in the uh, bottom. And then way up there, you'd have the actual flight crew and another uh, rear gunner. There are more air intakes. We've got some modern uh, antennas here. Those are the white ones. Uh, those are so that uh, they'll actually be able to talk with their traffic control now. Uh, that looks like a radar pod. Uh, graphite, yeah, so it, uh, it more than likely is. Let's take a look at the bomb bays. Uh, so it's a bomber. So it's all riveted in, but you can see down the seam. So my guess is that there are two bomb bays. Uh, the one on this side, which would fold down like that. Bonk. And then the one on that side, which would fold down like that. My guess is that there's the, this one little strip of metal here. Uh, along the middle uh, would not. Uh, I could be entirely wrong. I don't know, never flown one. Imagine being 18 years old and having 20, 30, 40 hours of flying time and being told to strap on one of these and go bomb Europe. I guess that's why they lost about a third of these in, uh, in combat. Still, that is pretty freaking impressive. Don't you think? Four engines, and again, uh, if you happen to be in Albany and you want to go for a ride on the 24th, uh, you can uh, you can likely do that. Now, my guess is these black strips here are boots. My guess is that they have some form of a de-ice, and those would be rubber boots that inflate. Don't know. I will check it out later on. All the rivets. So many rivets. I hope the camera's catching uh, some of the detail here. Oh yeah, black exhaust out the back. Another turbocharger there. Let's see what that looks like from underneath. Like that. Lots of exhaust going out. Back, that is cool. The belly. So this is uh, metal here. I mean the uh, the fuselage skin. I guess this is where the other airline or the other aircraft is tossed into it. Another rear gunner. Those are not small caliber <laughs> machine guns either. Oh wow, they have the belts. I don't know if you can see it, but they've got the belts uh, for the uh, machine guns uh, still in there. Crazy. That is cool. And then the tail, which comes right up to my head. Totally, totally badass. Some more oil in the back of the tail there, and that's blown back from the uh, inboard engine. Fabric, the yellow is all fabric, treated with, I don't know what, varnish to make it strong. Somebody loves this airplane, maintains it. Well, I bet you a lot of people do. More oil blown back from the outboard engine this time. Thing about radial engines, that's how you know they're working, is they're spraying oil and flame uh, far and wide. It's totally badass. Totally cool. The Liberty Bell in Albany, New York. Off in the distance, our jet, which is really cool in its own way. But as time goes by, there'll be less and less of these uh, flying. So take a gander while you can. Had a pretty amazing piece of history. Sully out.